again to the Beer Zerka. Check out the Beer Zerka Radiant channel where you will be blowing your mind up. Now check this out. I can't believe where we're going with this channel but these they're uh, close to my heart. It was really the first the very first time I put something in my hand and pulled the trigger where it wasn't like a dart gun or something like that. Like a, like a real toy, serious toy. This was the first step where, like now I might look at this thing as a toy. But it was the first time I fired any type of gun where I was like, this is not a toy. Where I felt like it wasn't a toy. As much as I was into guns even when I was a little kid, if I was firing something that fired like a, you know, a suction cup, a stick. I knew I was playing with a toy. But this, these things were like, whoa. This thing could dent a can. Yes, they were very underpowered. But um, I got to do a video on them just because uh, this is probably what started it all for me. So there you go. Uh, what are these things exactly? Well, they're one, uh, .177 caliber. Um, BB pellet dart guns that use um, spring power. So they're air guns that use um, a spring. So there's no CO2 cartridge. There's no pumping going on. Technically, you're pumping, but um, obviously they're made to look like a 45. How cool were you um, back in the day when you had something that looked even like a 45? This must be why I love 45 so much. So to charge it, you would pull this slide back like that. And you could see there's like some kind of springy stuff going on in there. Uh, you would load it through here. So you could pour BBs in here and it was like a reservoir on the top. And in the bottom, you could wedge like a dart or a, or a, um, a um, what do you call it, a pellet in there. And then you would close this. You would uh, fully charge it. You actually had a, you know cross bolt thumb safety here and uh air it was uh you'd be lucky if anything even came out of this barrel um you got to remember even just looking at this look at the uh, look at that was the, that's how long the barrel is technically because you're you're actually it's firing from right here so you could imagine how much uh momentum is that really gonna uh garner up so um Let's get into the history of these things, shall we? Uh, the first time that these marksmen hit the streets was in the 50s, uh, 1958. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, they were... Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not exactly sure the first year. Somebody out there that's into these things would know, but it was in the 50s. They made them until 58 with a certain configuration. They were definitely single-shot... Um, I'm throwing up some pictures here of, uh, you know, what it looked like, what the, what it looked like with the box and everything and what they, the actual, uh, guns looked like. They were a little bit different. And, uh, those things were definitely single shot. There was no reservoir that had BBs or anything like that and everything. And they was, as much as they said repeater on them for some reason, but they were a uh, single shot. And uh, in 1958 is when the ones like this came along. And those are called MPRs, Marksman Pistol Repeaters. Those were made from 58 to 77. And that's the one I originally had. It was um, uh, the first of, uh, of these looking guys. Um, these were uh, actually gifted to me. Um, when I was in a gun store, I saw these things just laying off on the side. And uh, it's a guy I know very well. And I was like, wow, would you believe that was the first gun, technically gun, that I ever uh, that I ever had? 
and uh, and he was like, "You want it? Take it." I don't know. Somebody let somebody let. You know, sometimes these guys buy collections of stuff, and then there's literally stuff that they'll just throw away. And I, I honestly think he was just it was just in a pile of stuff he was going to get rid of. And uh, he's like, yeah, take it. And he goes, wait, there's another one. And he dug in the bottom of another bin or whatever and found the other one and, and gave me both of them. So uh, I was ecstatic. But uh, when I then when I actually tried to use these things, I was like, oh, my God, that's right there. They're, they're horrible. I don't know if they're just old and worn out or if they were just like this from the very beginning. But um, uh, it's definitely a cool thing to be able to do a video with them, though. I'll tell you that. Um, so, uh, MPRs, Mark, Marksman Pistol Repeaters, from 58 to 77, that's the one that I had. This is the, the, uh, the next step in the game, was, um, these were called 1010s, Marksman 1010 Repeaters. Um, by this time, they changed a little bit. They had some plastic on them, the trigger... The slide release and the safety are made of plastic. So this is when things started to change a little bit. Also, it's funny, there's four places where these things are manufactured. Uh, when you see them on there. So you see how this one says Huntington Beach, California on there. So there's, there's four places in California. Um, the first ones were from Beverly Hills. The second batch were from Los Angeles. The third were from Huntington Beach. And then the later ones were from Torrance. Now, um, I don't remember exactly what mine said, my original one. I just, I wanted to remember so bad to see, like, which, if, if those original, those MPRs actually said anything on them. But I know that that's these 1010s. They definitely have these four different places. These are both Huntington Beach ones. Okay, uh, so, yeah, so that was the, the plastic that they added to them with the 1010s. Then, next to come was the Marksman 2000s. And those were plastic grips. The whole slide was plastic. They had like a kind of like a two-tone thing going on there. And, uh, but I think the mechanism inside was the same. And then I'm not sure of the years of these either. This is all, this is all like, you know, like later on, this is all into the, the 90s, like the 80s, 90s, and the, you know, into the 2000s here. There was a new 1010 that came out that's all plastic. Looks a little bit more like these guys, but uh, but those were, were all plastic. And I think they all have basically the same performance. It's almost like every generation has a, a version of these that they, uh, you know, that they had back then. My version was not that 50s version. I definitely did not have one of those. Although I vaguely remember when I was a kid, seeing one somewhere and being like, oh, wow, that's my BB gun. And I was like, wait, no, it isn't. And I was like, what's that? And I didn't like them because they had a weird, instead of just this tip-up thing uh, like this, instead of just this tip-up thing, it was like the whole front tipped up, you know what I mean? And, I, and it was a hinge. And I was just like, oh, that looks cheesy. I, I kind of like these because it really looked, it looked like a real gun. Whereas they were... There were plenty of BB guns around, you know what I mean? Like my older friends of mine and stuff like that had BB guns already and stuff, and you know that I just wanted one so bad. And with these, I was like, wow, this is these were cool because they really looked like a real gun, you know what I mean? But uh, they were, per in retrospect, they were perfect for the age, the the amount of responsibility that you have. Is perfectly tailored to the amount of damage these can do because they wouldn't even break the skin and short of getting hit directly in the eyeball uh you know you're pretty safe with these things if you uh you know made a mistake or i mean obviously if kids just went around shooting themselves with these eventually someone's going to get hurt that's not really they were definitely a level above dart gun you know what i mean but um but uh, it's a, an awesome learning piece where, uh, you know, they were very forgiving. Let's put it that way. If you should accidentally uh, send a BB directly into your hand from point blank range, you probably wouldn't even break the skin. It would probably just be a little bit of a bee sting feeling with a little red mark that would teach you a lesson. You know what I mean? And uh, I guess that's what it's about for like a first gun. So maybe that's what I'll hang on to these for till, uh 
some youngster that I know is, uh, that I feel has uh, become responsible enough to at least deal with these. And uh, that's about all the information I have on these. There's really not much out there. There really isn't much of a history, but but I'll tell you one thing, you know, where I remember these things from, like where something that sticks in my mind that I'll remember forever is when I saw um, National Lampoon's Vacation and I saw at the end, it's the gun that Chevy Chase holds on John Candy, you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll never forget that. You know, and he said it's a BB gun and he told him, like, you know, that it's a that it's a BB gun. And he goes, it'll break the skin. Oh, it will. He goes, I don't even think so. I don't even think that'll break the skin. And it's funny that they had that conversation in the in the um, in the roller coaster because uh, it's definitely up in the air whether this thing would break the skin or not. John Candy's skin, absolutely not. But uh, you know, they did use this thing. You see it a lot. I have a few pictures thrown up there of stuff that I could find, but you'd see every once in a while that. Uh, it would be in somebody's holster or in somebody's hand during a, uh, there was like a, a Chappelle show uh, skit that I, I had seen it in. I think I threw up a picture of it there and, uh, and a couple of other things. Some law and order cop had one in a holster. And uh, you see it every once in a while just because uh, I guess it's easier just to, with these things on set. I mean, it looked enough like a real gun that you'd be able to use it in movies and stuff. So... And uh, there's a, uh, I'm going to put a video clip here. I think it was in the intro. This video clip right here that you're seeing is actually uh, from uh, Forensic Files, where they, uh, they had an episode where they showed a guy shooting a gun and they used it. So uh, anyway, you all take care. Um, I'll see you all next time. And uh, stay healthy. Yes, yeah, Zach. Ah.